Hello my loyal companions, welcome back to the channel. Now I know a majority of you guys probably haven't tried every single rogue yet, whether you've unlocked them or not, you may not be sure who's best to transition from, from the rogues you particularly enjoy. My goal in this video is to go through a flowchart of exactly where you should get started to learn the game best within Rogue Company, based off different playstyles that you may want to adopt. This will not only help you unlock new rogues, but also help you improve at the game without drastically changing your playstyle from one to the other if that's not what you're interested in. If you do go on to enjoy the video or you just want to see daily, educational, rogue company content, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. But for now, let's get into it. Just before we start the video, I want to say this is not a tier list video of who are the best rogues. These are just the best recommendations of who I suggest to unlock to learn the game on so you get a good variety of every single rogue. I will be doing a tier list tomorrow for that video, so make sure you stay tuned for that and that will tell you exactly what the meta is within Rogue Company and may help your decision somewhat as well. Also a reminder that any rogue that you want to play, you can test in the shooting range for absolutely free whether you have them unlocked or not. You can just go into the shooting range, load them up and practice them, use their guns, use their abilities and see what you feel if that's what you're looking for. For now though, let's have a look at this flowchart who I recommend you start learning the game on, how you progress that to eventually learn every single rogue within the game. Let's start with the rogue that I suggest all new players to learn first of all. She's the rogue that you use in the tutorial and one that I definitely recommend for you to try and this is going to be Ronin. Ronin in my opinion is the most adaptable rogue in the game and one of the best to learn due to how simple her weapons really are to use, the K30 being a great mid to close range assault rifle and the SLC being the best SMG up close in my opinion as well. She has two great guns, a smoke grenade, a frag grenade which are great important pieces of utility to learn and a great perk set to help you survive and just learn the game a little bit better. You'll get used to the, some of the perks you get used to some good abilities, you can use it aggressively, you can use her defensively. There's lots you can learn with Ronin. I would definitely recommend all new players trying her first. From there, you really have three different pathways you can go. If you're looking for something a bit more aggressive, a bit more damage, but you do like the weapons that Ronin has, I recommend going towards Dima as your next option. He's going to go towards our more aggressive utility and ability focused use. If you like Ronin's ability, he's got a great one to sort of complement that in the Merv grenade launcher, which is like a big cluster grenade launcher that you can shoot. He also has the same KA-30, and he has a little bit more aggressive perk set, allowing him to get life drain and replenish, which restores some of your health and ammo when you do buy these and get it down. He also has the frag grenade as well, which will be very comfortable for you if you're transitioning from Ronin. If you're going for a more gunplay orientated play style and you enjoy straight 1v1s, I recommend going the duelist route, which will head towards Scorch, who is one rogue that you do have to unlock to use. Scorch is the queen of 1v1s. She has great survivability and tenacity and headstrong, which gives her extra health and resistance to explosives. She's the same SMG as Ronin and a shotgun for even more up close personal fights. And her ability overheat allows her to basically win every single 1v1 she gets into with extra burn damage applied per bullet. She's definitely one of the best rogues and simplest to learn as you go into the more aggressive route of the game. If you're not really feeling hyper aggressive like these two options allow and you want to go for a more supportive role within your team, I recommend from here transitioning to Dahlia. Dahlia is very highly up there as one of the most adaptable rogues but it's slightly harder to use than Ronin which is kind of the point of this flowchart is so that you use harder rogues as we go further down. Dahlia has a DMR which is a single shot high damage weapon for range which is similar to K30 due to its fire rate but is an absolute beast and she also has the Objection which is another very fast fire rate SMG that you can use similar to the SLC from Ronin. She has exactly the same equipment in the Smoke Grenade and the Frag Grenade and a very similar perk set as well that will be very familiar to you from Ronin. The difference is she is this more supportive playstyle in that her ability is a linked revive and her passive is copying the passive of that person you choose to link to. This offers for a bit more complexity but she is this more supportive role holding longer angles and range and might be more your playstyle if you're a slower more passive player. Let's now look at our next level of complicated rogues and where you can transition from these three downwards. We'll stick with Dahlia if you're going for this more supportive playstyle you might be interested in going to another medic in Saint. Saint is a pure medic and the first medic within the game before Dahlia was introduced and what he allows you to do is get again a global revive off that you can just press your button and anyone who's down will be revived after a period of time that your drone goes to revive them. But his weapons are very comfortable and familiar of that from both Ronin and of Dahlia. 
He has a great M4 and a Mamba DMR, which is a three round burst. Slightly different, but should be somewhat familiar, especially from the KE30 from Ronin. Perk set is a little bit different, but nothing too complicated. And the whole point is that you will learn more as you use these rogues. But he'll be a very good transition from Dahlia for you. Just requires a little bit more skill and survivability on his part, because he's a little bit less forgiving and can die a bit easier. However, if you're bored of the supportive playstyle, you can definitely transition from Dahlia into the defender playstyle too, which again is a bit more passive, a bit more reserved, but is a bit more utility focused to help you and your team hold positions. And the best one to go from Dahlia is towards Trench, specifically due to the fact they have the same DMR, the MXR, which is a fantastic weapon. I do recommend you guys using it on them. And it's just a great transition from Dahlia. Going down this path will lead you to more defender-based playstyles using zone control such as the barbed wire and gas grenades to slow down enemy positions and also introduce you to trophy systems or active protection systems as the only rogue company to help stop hard pushes by breaking projectiles that are thrown towards you. But let's say you're not into the supportive playstyle and you're more of an aggressive player and you've gone down to the Scorch route. Well, from Scorch, there's a really good transition into other duelists, these great 1v1 rogues, and two that I definitely recommend you picking up, but are slightly different, a Shark and Lancer. Shark is this in-your-face kind of breacher type rogue who can pop his ability to gain additional health and absolutely charge you down to try and get some kills. He's a really good SMG and a shotgun to back him up, with a flash grenade and semtex to really flush out positions. He also has the same perk set as Dima in that he has life drain and replenish, which will mean he's just even better at surviving and beating multiple people in a fight, as he can just down somebody, gain all his health and uh, ammo back, and then move to another target. He's definitely an aggressive, in-your-face type rogue who really can benefit from his ability, whether you use it for the additional health or whether you can use it as a self-revive if you were to get picked and you don't have anyone to heal you on the team. Your other option for this more aggressive playstyle though is going to be Lancer, and she is your more stealthy, flank orientated rogue who is really great at sitting on the edges and using her passive elusive to roll reload. And what I mean by that is when she rolls using the animation, she reloads her weapon. This means she can bounce between targets really, really easily, and the fact that she has a life drain perk means that when she gets it down, she gets a bit of health back as well, and this means she can really pop between targets nicely. She has a Semtex and a Smoke Grenade, which will feel very familiar from you from some of these other rogues you've tried. She's all about positioning, timing, and using great flank opportunities with her quick and quiet ability, which increases her movement speed and silences her footsteps so she can get around these flanks without being heard really easily. She is for your more stealthy type players rather than Shark, who is for your more aggressive type players who want to be up in your face. If you've gone the Dima route, however, I recommend then going for another duelist who is very aggressive and very utility heavy, such as Dima, and this is going to be Kestrel. Kestrel is the newest rogue to enter rogue company, so she has a bit of learning to do, but she has a great AR, very similar to the KE30, but does a little bit better damage and fire rate, making it, in my opinion, an overall better weapon. And she has a lot of other pieces of kit that might be quite useful to you should you want to really frag out using your ability Halo Drones. Halo Drones sends a swarm of explosive drones to a location, doing really good damage to certain areas, and her perk set really allows her to sort of bounce between targets similar to these other duelists I just mentioned. Going Kestrel will also introduce you to the bounce grenade and stim shots, which are really good pieces of equipment that might be useful. The bounce grenade is slightly different from a frag grenade in that its fuse time only starts when you bounce it off of a surface, and it can really find some clutch positionings if you learn it. And the stim shot is great at giving you an extra health boost and regen and sp speed to win some fights. Overall, if you really like Dima's playstyle, I think you'll like Kestrel as well. As we drop down now into the next sort of level of rogues from those, it gets a little bit more complicated. Sticking with Kestrel and also Shark, you might be interested in playing Seagrid. Seagrid is a slightly different playstyle in that she is a breacher. She's very much designed around using her ability, which is Ballistic Shield. She pulls out a shield and she can shoot over it using her pistol only. Her primary weapon, the D40C, is the exact same as Shark's SMG, so this might be quite familiar to you. And she also has the stim shots available, which you would have seen from Kestrel if you went down that route. She's very aggressive and she is very, very good if you're good with her, but does have a very high learning curve due to how important that ballistic shield can be to pull off in the right situation. Her perk set offers a little bit more survivability than some of these other rogues, and that might be useful for you as well if you prefer to be a bit tankier in these fights. If you did like the SMG playstyle from someone like Shark or Lancer, however, you might be interested in playing someone with a slightly different type of SMG, but also very good, which is going to be Glitch with the LMPX. The LMPX is a more versatile SMG in that it's good up close, not as good as some of the other ones, 
but it really excels at longer ranges as well compared to the other SMGs. Especially when you get upgrades in it, it's an absolute beamer, but Glitch is quite a hard rogue to play due to his ability, which is the hack. Glitch pulls out a little device that you can see other rogues within and other pieces of equipment, and he can use that to hack them and destroy them or in the case of hacking a rogue, he EMPs them so they can't use their abilities or gadgets. This ability is really quite complicated to use in that it's great for intel and it's great for disrupting the enemy, but knowing the right time to actually use it and when just to use it for information really can trip up some newer players. What Glitch does have in mind, he's quite a good transition from Lancer though, is he does have padded steps which silences his footsteps when he's walking or crouching. This means he can also be played on the flank, very similar to Dallas who is just next to him, who has padded steps as well. Both of these rogues can also be used on the flank, which is a great transition from Lancer due to the padded steps, but they specifically are good at seeing who's around them, which Lancer can't do. Glitch can pull out his hacker device and see what's in his immediate area, or Dallas can be used to snap and reveal, which is his main ability, the closest person to him. When upon downing an enemy, he'll get a snap back and he can use it once again, uh, only when he downs an enemy though. This means Dallas can work through members of the enemy team one at a time by snapping, killing, and moving on to the next target and just be silent while he does it. Dallas is also a good option if you've gone the more supportive route from Saint. The reason for this is because Saint requires quite good accuracy of his weapons and Dallas is all about that accuracy. The HRM is like an AK-47 variant within this game and has really high recoil, but great damage if you can hit the shots, especially a headshot. His other weapon is the Devotion, which is a absolute monster of a DMR if you're accurate. Your goal with the devotion is to hit one shot to the head, one shot to the body, and you'll get a kill almost every single time. You really want to be focusing around that, but it does require quite high accuracy and high, quite high skill cap, which is why he's so low down on this list. But say you're interested in that defender playstyle and you've got Trench and you really want to try other rogues that do a very similar crowd control job, you've got Anvil and Vi as two options. Anvil is your very traditional rogue that you may see in other games who has a shield that he can place down and hold a position really well. He's also the only rogue with an LMG, so if you love to spray and pray, he's absolutely your guy. He has an APS, the Active Protection Trophy System that we talked about, which would be great for defending a position, but also has an aggressive C4, which he can throw down to block any enemies really hard pushing him. His perk set is absolutely amazing, if not the best in the game, where he has tenacity, headstrong, and life drain, meaning his great survivability that no other rogue can really match him on. The difficulty with Anvil is that he has a very one-dimensional playstyle, but if you really play with him a lot, he can be a great transition from Trench, who is a bit more of a basic rogue in that sense. Uh, Trench is kind of easy to use compared to Anvil, but Anvil can definitely get the job done if you need it. The other option though, and the more complicated option even more, I think, is Vi, who is all about aggressive utility zone control. Unlike Trench and Anvil, who are great at slowing people down using that shield or that barbed wire, what Vi does is she throws down poison vials onto an area of the ground that if enemies walk through, it permanently reduces their health at two per tick. This health is then transferred up to Vi, so she gains additional health up to 125. Vi's ability to use this zone control and damage the enemies is much more threatening than just the slowing from the other defender rogues within the game at the moment. And she also has a great utility set and kit and perks and weapons that allow her to do this even more. She's the Nightshade AR, which is not only an AR, but also can act as an SMG and absolutely beam up close while doing decent damage at mid to long range as well. She has an incendiary grenade also, which just complements this aggressive damaging zone control and she can throw down the fire and stop people pushing through that aggressive position. She's in my opinion, the best rogue within the game, as I'm sure you'll see from the tier list tomorrow. I definitely recommend you picking her up at some point if you're interested in a more aggressive defender playstyle. From here though, we go to some of the hardest rogues to use, kind of. Um, or just at least the more niche ones. Focusing specifically from the glitch and Dallas path, you have another Intel rogue who uses the LMPX SMG that I talked about, which is Talon. Talon has a radar dart that you throw across an area and it reveals people on the mini map in that specific area that the dart covers. It can then be reclaimed from distance using his passive mag gloves, which allows him to take items off the ground from a distance as opposed to other people who have to literally go and pick them up. This means he can throw the dart, gain information, bullet back and throw it somewhere else for more information. But this is quite a hard mechanic to use. Beyond that though, Talon's a really good rogue with the LMPX is a great SMG and a DMR if you're interested in more single shot weapon play styles and a great ability and perk set as well. He has the C4 and flashbang, which are great aggressive pieces of equipment. And he also has tenacity and life drain, which I've talked about a few times 
They are great perks and not only helping your survivability, but also help you outplay enemy players by gaining extra health upon downing them. This means you can move from target to target quite easily, which other rogues can't do because they have to wait to heal. Whilst Talon is a good move from Dallas, you also have the Sniper playstyle, which I've left right at the bottom because I think it's one of the most niche ones that not everybody's interested in, but you can absolutely skip to this one if you're interested in snipers nonetheless. The two snipers in the game are Fixer and Phantom. Fixer is your closer range sniper. He's a good close to mid range sniper with a great fire rate on his two bullet sniper, the tier. This can two tap to the body with an incredibly fast fire rate or one tap to the head at the closest ranges. If you're looking for a longer range option though, you wanna go Phantom because she has significantly more range in her sniper than Fixer does, but does fall off in that she doesn't have as fast a fire rate. She is more of your traditional sniper Whereas Fixer is this sort of alternate sniper who is there to get quick kills, reload, reposition, and move to the next target. Fixer has one of the best abilities in the game, which allows him to see through smoke using thermal vision. He pops these goggles down, and for about 15 seconds, he can look through the smoke and see enemies highlighted in orange. This is incredibly useful because smoke grenades are such an important part of the game, especially when you get to the harder levels, which you will be at if you're contemplating these rogues. With the C4 as well, he's very similar to Talon, and he also has a secondary weapon of that same DMR, the Deadeye, that Talon has, which is why they can transition between each other quite well as well. But as Dallas is all focused about accuracy, it makes sense that the snipers then follow out on because they're even more about accuracy with very unforgiving shots if you miss them. Phantom is also a great rogue and actually my personal favorite one and she has a slightly different playstyle in that she can be really intel focused if you use her sticky sensor which reveal people sort of like a trip mine if they walk over it they're revealed but also has the nightshade which is the same AR I mentioned with Vi and is a really good option if you want to go for a more run and gun play style as opposed to the sniper and this was a recent change that they added which I'm really enjoying. Overall though guys this is the sort of flowchart of rogues I would recommend you trying one at a time. I always recommend you start with Ronin but based on your personal preference of play style you may choose to go down some of these different paths and remember you can alternate and switch no matter what you want. I just think this is the best layout of who to play next based on your play style from all my experience within the game. On screen now, I'm also going to show you quickly which rogues of these are locked and that you can only get by unlocking them, buying them with reputation. So that might also affect your path. In my opinion, the rogues that are available at the start are not the best rogues to play at the start um, because they're more defender focused. And if you're into this more aggressive play style, you're going to want to unlock some of the rogues I've mentioned in this other side of the chart. Let me know in the comments what you think of this and how you think of these rogues. Again, tier lists will be coming tomorrow and I'll tell you exactly what the meta currently is within Rogue Company in the sense of demolition. Okay then guys, that takes us to the end of the video. And if you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also come follow me on twitch.tv slash radbargaming to see live gameplay commentaries, guides, Q and A's and playing with viewers. All the links you're going to need are down in the description below. But for now guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, be loyal, be brave, be relentless. I'll catch you in the next.